something's wrong. There's a cell missing. <laughs> All right, here it is. It's on the bench. It's in for repairs. Unfortunately, uh, I've had some cells turn into self-dischargers. And um, you usually notice this after your pack goes wildly out of balance. Actually, I ended up discharging the pack pretty low and then this battery I noticed uh, overnight settled down to like two volts. So I'm like, okay, there's definitely something wrong. So I, I think I've come up with a way to determine what cell in this uh, parallel pack is the discharging cell. If you have a good meter like this fluke here, and maybe other ones will do this, you can set it to millivolts. And then we can try to measure a voltage drop between cells. And the reason why this can work is because any conductor will have some resistance. And then therefore you can measure uh, a voltage drop between two points. This is exactly how a shunt would work. So I apply, I'm, a, I'm applying that concept to locating uh, the bad cell. And I've actually think I already located it and I marked it. So if you notice it in the video already, then good for you. But the way that I'm doing this is, is just measuring the voltage drop between cells. So there we got a 0 0.011 millivolt, 0 0.004, 0 0.003, ooh, a 0 0.137, substantially larger. So let's just check them all. 0 .007, 0 0.007, 0 0.008, 0 0.047. Ooh, there's the big one again, 0 0.178. So if you're noticing something here, if we measure here, we get a large drop, 1.33. On the other side of this cell, 1.78. And I feel like the one below it, there we go, 1.52. So what have we done here? We've basically narrowed it down to this cell because any point around this cell that we measure, we measure a large voltage drop. And uh, I've already measured all the other cells and nothing comes even close to the size of the voltage drop as uh, this one right here. So I've already got it marked with a blue dot. All right, so that is probably our bad cell that's discharging the other ones. Let's do one more check. And if you have a thermal camera, this whole process is probably a lot easier because you probably just can see it. But I don't have one. So another thing that I've done here is check the temperature. So we got uh, 54.6. 54.3, 54.4, oh, look at that, 59.8, or oh, 6, 60, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 5.7, 5.6. So, again, that is their cell that is causing the largest voltage drop, and it is, it is warmer than the rest of the cells. I'm saying that's got to be our cell. That's our bad guy. So basically what I got to do is perform surgery and probably make a cut here and then a cut here in these tabbing material. And then I'm going to have to pry up, break the welds and fold uh, the tabbing material over this way. And then you can slide these cells out, but you, I have to cut these uh, little retainers out and then the cell will slide out of there and then I can slide in another cell and re-weld it, re-spot weld it. So luckily I do have a few cells <laughs> and um, some of them are good. I know this because 
they've been setting for a very long time and let's see here we've got uh, 3.2 volts there that's going to be a really good cell because it's definitely been setting a long time if it was a self discharger it would be very low 3.2 again so that's a good cell and let's see what we got here 3.17 so that's a good cell and then <clears throat> I want to show you this one do you see that you see that dent right there that's gonna almost guarantee a self discharger if you get dented cells you don't want dented cells because that squeezes everything together and then they'll short out internally they'll get small shorts in there so let's see what we got here look at that 0.9 so that sells garbage and we would have already known it so I'm gonna I'm gonna repair this guy and see if we can't get my main battery back up and functional okay guys so I made a cut here and then here and I pried up the tab material off of our cell that we located as being the bad one and I did it on both sides same way and then now what I have to do is clip these little plastic pieces that keep the cell from slipping out of the cell holder there we go now I should be able to push it out That was real tough. Um, seemed like it kept getting caught on part of the cell. It may have been easier to go out the negative side. So I probably should have brought it out the negative side. But there it is. It's out. And that's our supposedly bad cell. All right, so let's find the best one out of the bunch. Three, two, five. Three, one, seven. Three, two, eight. So let's take the three, two, eight. And we we'll just slide it back in. I did cut the side of this uh, cell holder to give it some relief because it was still very tight. Make sure you put it in the right way. So that is in the right way. All right, do some spots on this one first. Let's see if we can get this one on.
All right, so I think this one's patched up. Well, it looks a little, <laughs> a little messy, but you know, you won't be able to see it once it's in the battery pack. Uh, I might end up putting some solder here, in here. If you've never used this uh, spot welder, it's a really good one. You see that light flashing? So that's every time that light flashes, that's when it fires. So you got to get the probes on the thing that you're going to weld in between those flashes. So you get it on, it flashes and it welds. If you if you put the probes down as that thing is flashing, uh, it'll make this huge spark and freak you out. All right, so let's do the other side. Ooh, like that. <laughs> and then it'll, it'll blow a hole in whatever it is that it touches. Yeah, so be careful. Don't do it while it's uh, in the middle of a flash. <laughs> All right. Sorry, my hand's in the way. All right. See if you get if you get in the rhythm, you can you can hit it in between every flash. I used to do that when I was building up big <laughs> packs. All right, that'll work. Let's unplug this guy. So there we go. We got uh, the negative side all patched back up. Like I said, I'm probably going to run a little bit of solder here in here just to make sure the connections are all really good. And uh, that side's all patched back up. So uh, what I'll do now is I'm going to charge this thing up fully. And then I'm going to let it you know equalized with this new cell the new cell was close to the same voltage level as the other ones but you know that that doesn't really mean that it's at the same state of charge so I'm gonna fully charge this thing up to 3.65 let that one cell equalize out to the rest of them and then uh, I'm gonna check I'm gonna use the 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 voltage drop method again to see if uh, you know, we really did fix the problem. You know, see if there's any big voltage drop like we saw before. And if there's not, then I'm gonna let this cell set for maybe a week and then recharge it and see how much power I can charge back into it. That'll give me an indication if a lot of power has uh, faded from this thing, if it's uh, still self-consuming. Uh, if it's, if I charge it back up in a week, then and and it doesn't take much power to fully charge then i'll just call it good and then i'll put it back in my my main pack so i'll make a follow-up video to see where we're at and if it's you know good we'll put it in the other pack but for now that's the end of the video i hope that you guys uh, learned something from this and i'll catch you on the next one